Facebook Live, Facebook Live, we have arrived. One more time, y'all, let's get it in. Conference muted. Conference recording started. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. This is Watchman Derek Yahuda, Israel, also known as Pastor Derek, on the early what I see the script study and prayer line on this 26th day in February 2024. Let's get it in, y'all. We back at it like a fanatic Romans 8 series. We in part two. <clears throat> let's let's rock, y'all. Uh, shout out to uh, Elder Yosef holding down the conference line like he do. Uh, faithfully, got Big Ed in the building. Take the most high for you. Got mother-in-law, Mother Joyce is up in here. Got my mom. Hello, mother. She up in here as well. <clears throat> Randall, Randall in the building. Hallelujah. Got my big sister Fee um, in the house. Al Mal just got kicked out some kind of way, but I know he on his way back in here. <laughs> Thank the most high for him. What's up with it, Teresa? Good to see you. Good to see that baby out there doing well in school and everything as well. Having their business. Hallelujah. You too. You're out there handling your business as well. So may the most high continue to broke you. Romans 8, y'all. Let's get it in. Now, so far, you know, you know, we learned that in the eighth chapter that, you know, there is no condemnation to them that are in the Messiah. Right. The fulfillment of the seed of the woman that would bruise the head of the serpent. Barbara, we find out that that's the way to go. Uh, G man. That there is no condemnation that that uh, to them that are in the Messiah. Not in Gandhi, not in Muhammad, not in Buddha, but in the Messiah. No wonder, in uh, John uh, fourteen, the Messiah said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me." No wonder he said that. <laughs> Because Romans 8 and 1, 1 taught us that there's no condemnation to them that are in the Messiah. But it's not just being in the Messiah. It's who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And that's the problem with Catholicism. Because they just tell you, as long as you got Jesus, it's all good. Well, you, you know, newsflash, the letter J ain't nothing but about 400 years old. And so you know, that's not his real name, you know, for starters, right? And and when and when we when we we knew better, we should do better. <clears throat> Secondly, if you're in the Messiah, Yahusha then now you have to ex be exercised and not walking after your flesh. Uh, David, Javi, you can't walk after the flesh, but you got to walk after the spirit. So first thing, you got to be in the Messiah. You got to be a believer. And then you can't walk after your human nature, your evil nature. You got you to gotta learn to walk, in, you know, in the Ruah. Are, are y'all with me? Um, what's up with the family member? And then <clears throat> it went on to teach us that walking according to the word, his, his spirit gives you life. And walking and walking after sin gives you death. Yeah. So then it lets you know, you know, why the Ten Commandments couldn't help us. It wasn't the Ten Commandments' fault. It was our fault, our sinful nature, our fallen nature. Yah told 
the children of Israel what to do. They didn't do it. They ended up being scattered, conquered, and shipped into slavery because <clears throat> they couldn't do it. Right? Um, so we'll pick it up in the sixth verse, right? Where it's teaching us, well, better yet, five, fifth verse. Let's pick it up at the fifth verse, y'all. And it says, For they that after the flesh do mind things, they that after the flesh do mind things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Um, people that are after the flesh are people that's attached to this world. <clears throat> and that's their main objective and their goal. And you can easily see it. Easily. It's not even a mystery. Right? He's describing the state of mind that will cause you to be destroyed. They that are after the flesh do mind things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit do things of the spirit. You got you got people that are geared towards the creator. And you can tell. All you gotta do is watch them. You ain't even gotta say nothing. All you gotta do is watch them and or know them. If you know them, <clears throat> you learn about their agenda. And their agenda will tell you everything. You might you might know someone whose agenda they're known as party animals. Let the good times roll. You got some folks that are like, you know, travelers. And they're known for that. You got you got workaholics. They're known for that. Folks that are career students. That's what they do. You you got some folks that are after Yah. And you know it, because that's what they do. <clears throat> you ain't even got to be around them. Next time you see them, that's what they're going to be doing. Last time you saw them, that's what they was doing. Prioritizing. It's not like people that's after y'all don't travel or have jobs. But you pinpoint yourself. You say, oh, no, they they in the y'all. Because that's, that, that's what they do. They might go have a good time. But their good time is going to be limited into the rules of the Most High. You can, you, you'll be you'll be able to tell. Uh, read <clears throat> we in here Romans um, eight and five. For they that are after the flesh do mind things of the flesh. A person is after the flesh. Um, respond to how they feel. The things they do is based on their flesh. Right? But they'd have the spirit, the things of the spirit. You can rub someone the wrong way that's after the spirit and you know you rubbed them the wrong way because what? You might have known them in their former life. Or they're human like you. And folks know, you know, what rubs people the wrong way. But a person in the spirit don't respond like somebody in the flesh. It's a difference. Yeah. Fifth first. <clears throat> For they that after the flesh do mind things of the flesh, but they... They're after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Even, Leslie Sutton and Trenta, even um, 
when you see someone that's religious, did you know you can tell the difference between someone that's religious and someone that has a relationship with Yah? Did y'all know that? Because you can be religious and still be after the flesh, Logan. A religious person is over-religious, but they don't live it. They, they don't, they don't, they don't, they'll go, they'll go against their religion for their flesh. I'm just telling you, listen. <clears throat> fifth verse, fifth verse. For they that after the flesh do mind things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit do things of the spirit. Look what the sixth verse say. For to be carnally minded is death. That's going after the flesh. It's, it's letting us know the results of being natural, another uh, uh, definition of carnal is natural. And to be naturally minded, human minded, right, is death. Because humanity has been disqualified because of the first human, the first Adam. Yeah, and then sin perpetrated all the way until now. So to be carnally minded is death. That's why we had to be born again. That's why the seed of the woman had to come to bruise the head of the serpent. Because the first Adam was disqualified, there was need of a second Adam. If we have the state of mind of the first Adam, we got problems. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It's a game changer, y'all. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Period. Yeah. Your mind is on the word. Your mind is on the will of Yah. Not only do you have eternal life, but you have peace. You can withstand the wiles of the devil. And you have a peace because you have a purpose-driven life. You're driven by the spirit of the creator and you are about his business. That brings an unspeakable peace. Stay with me. Seven verse. <clears throat> because the carnal mind is enmity against Yah. It's telling you why. I love how the word works because it just don't, you know, the most I don't, you know, just you know, shoot out orders. He, he led by example and he'll even tell you why to the believer. You're right, Reed. <clears throat> Reed wrote, the carnal mind is enmity against Yah for it is not subject to the law of Yah, period. Yeah, <clears throat> that's why. To, it, 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 six verse told you that to be carnal mind is death, but to be spiritual mind is life and peace. And it told you the problem with the carnal mind because it's enmity and enmity means hostile. It don't agree. Y'all would tell you to do something. The carnal mind said, no, no, man, I got to be about my money. He'll tell you, you can't serve two masters. Well, I got to get my money. And I love God too, but I got to get, you know. Carnal mind don't agree. Don't sleep with them before marriage. Well, I got to make sure that we compatible in the bed before I marry them. The carnal mind just do not agree with the spirit of Yah. Kedra, bless you. Good to see you in here, young lady. I wanted to speak to y'all before I left. But definitely good seeing you and your beautiful family. <clears throat> Send my love to everybody. Are y'all with me? Look what it say. So the six verse, Romans 8 and 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death. There's a, there's a certain state of mind that leads us to death, Banks. There's a certain state of mind, right? And it's carnal. But to be spiritually minded, you're good. That leads to life and peace. It tells you why. Because the carnal mind is enmity, it's hostile against Yah. Look, look what else it say about it. It's not subject to the law of Yah. You know what subject mean? You know how king have subjects? They come in this court and they bow down. Don Deems. 
the carnal mind ain't gonna bow down to Yah. The carnal mind got its opinion. It got its way of doing things, and that's exactly what it's gonna do, Leslie Sutton, Banks. Logan, it's going to do what he want to do. You can say whatever you want to say. You can preach whatever you want to preach. When you all said and done, a carnal mind, you mean a Yahoo, is going to do what he want to do. Period. He got his way of doing things, and you or Yah going to stop him. Might get your feelings hurt. Getting in their business. Real talk. Get more than your feelings hurt with some folk. <laughs> Seven verse, because the carnal mind is empty against Yah, it's not subject. It's not a subject. It ain't bowing down. It's not subject to the law of Yah, neither indeed can be. So the A first then tells us, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yah. We got to go through a transition, y'all, to have a relationship with the creator. And a lot of people don't know that. Look at this. From the time we were born in sin and shaped into iniquity. Right? We we're born in sin and we we're shaped in iniquity. So, in order to have a relationship with Yah, there's something that has to happen. You can't be born and just grow up a little child saying that you and the Most High is cool. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. There has to be a transition. You have to switch from your first nature, your first Adam nature, to your second Adam nature, the Mashiach. Yahushua, there has to be a switch. The switch comes from, comes from you being a believer and accepting the will of Yah for your life. When you accept the will of Yah for your life, that's when you're baptized into his death to rise up to walk in the newness of life. We call it born again, according to John, the sixth chapter, third chapter, John, the third chapter. Messiah told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Are y'all with me? Listen. So if we look at the eighth verse, so then they that are in the flesh, you just a regular human being cannot please Yah. Yeah. Folks got, there's so many religious options out there. And folks like to say many paths to lead to the one Elohim. That's not what the Messiah said. And they say they believe in the Messiah. The Messiah said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. No man. Ain't no other religion. Ain't no many paths. We in here, Beth. Yeah. Ain't no many paths. Vanessa Mitchell, Bev Hampton in the building, Romans 8 and 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yah. We, we got to be born again. We got we to gotta admit our sin, confess it, and turn from it. Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahushua. We got to go through a transition, uh, a flight. So Romans 8, 9 says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Do, do y'all hear that? It's saying that we are, who is it talking to? It said, but you are in the, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Yah dwells in you. See? Did y'all see that? You got to have the spirit of Yah dwelling in you. Did y'all see that? We wasn't born with the Ruach HaKadosh, with the spirit of Yah, what they call the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. We wasn't born, we, were, we was born with our own spirit. Which was enmity against Yah. We had to be born again. We had to acknowledge him. We have to make an acknowledgement that we were born in sin. We were born wrong. We got to repent. Yeah, we, we got to understand. You got to understand that. Oh, I don't bother nobody. I, I always was a believer. 
you weren't born a believer. You you probably been born with awareness of a creator. But in in order to receive him, you got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That's why our children is covered by the believer's life when they're young, because they don't know nothing about that. They don't know nothing about that. You, we got to teach them, raise them up in the way they should go. When they're old, they won't part. And, and our lives, is we cover their lives according to of, of 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. Else were they unclean, but now they're holy. The believer sanctifies the life of the children. Because because it's their responsibility to raise them up in Yah. When they get to the age of accountability, then they got to believe on their own for themselves. Listen. So look what it says about us. No, I will start at eight so you can really we'll flow into it. So it says, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yah. You got to be born again, period. Right? You're in the flesh, you cannot please Yah. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Look at what it's saying about us. But you are not in the flesh. You're not living for your carnal nature no more. Because if you are, you're going to be doing things you shouldn't do. If you're in the flesh, you're going to do things you shouldn't do. Correct, flight. Flights say born in corruption, arisen in correct corruption. You're right. And so it says, but you are not in the flesh. Because if you're in the flesh, you're going to be doing things you shouldn't do. You're going to be having relationships that you shouldn't be in. Yeah. You're going to be dealing with people you shouldn't be dealing with, not on that level. If you're in the flesh. You're going to be dating and flirting marrying and sleeping with folks, getting high and drunk with folks, you shouldn't be doing it with. And the only way, reason why you'll do that is if you're in the flesh. Listen, but you are not in the flesh. Look what it's saying about us. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Yah dwelleth in you. The spirit of Yah got to dwell in you. Didn't he say, I stood at the door and I knocked? And if any man heard, listening, you know, it got to be the word in order to hear, right? Stood at the door and knocked. If any man heard, heard the word, opened up their heart and let him in. He said, I'll come and sup with you. Supper is short for supper. What's for supper? The word. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yah. If you're going to live, Deuteronomy 8 and 3. <laughs> Matthew 4 and 4. Are y'all with me? <clears throat> Nine first, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Yah dwells in you. You got to let it in. And then it got to dwell there, not come and leave. It got to dwell there. The word of Yah got to live inside of you. You got to hide it in your heart that you might not sin against him. Alina, are you with me? Eight and nine, Romans eight and nine, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Yah dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of the Messiah, he is none of his. He is none of his. I share when I get here oftentimes, more time than not, I, I share the fact that um, this also proves it ain't number one Elohim and it ain't number one spirit. And the spirit is Yah. And I show them um, in the ninth verse, right? And then the tenth verse. But look at the ninth verse. Look what they say. Ninth verse say, but you're in the flesh, but not in the spirit. But you, but, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Yah dwells in you. So it started off saying, if the spirit of Yah dwell in you. 
right? That's the Father, ain't it? The Spirit of Yah. It shall be that the Spirit of Yah dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of the Messiah, he is none of his. It went from the Spirit of Yah to the Spirit of the Messiah because it's the same thing. People just don't know it. A lot of people don't know because they think it's three. Some believe some people believe it's two. This shows that one, this, the Spirit of Yah is the Spirit of the Messiah. If so be that the Spirit of Yah dwelleth in you, that if any man have not the Spirit of the Messiah, he is none of him. And if the Messiah be in you, it's still saying the Messiah. Now, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Look what the 11 verse says, it's going to help us more. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahushua from the dead dwells in you. Did y'all hear that? That's where it get real heavy. Look at the 11 verse. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Yahushua. Who raised up Yahushua? Himself? We, it just said it's the spirit of the Messiah. In the ninth verse. In the 10th verse as well. If the spirit of the Messiah be in you. The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahushua from the dead dwell in you, that means he raised himself up. Didn't he say it? He said, oh, you can tear down this temple in three days. I'm going to take it up again. That's what the Messiah said. I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm just telling you what the Bible say. <laughs> Do y'all see it? I'm going to roll it one more time, and then I'm going to go on with this lesson. But, but, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Yah dwells in you. So it started off in the ninth verse. It's the spirit of Yah dwelling in you. That's the father, y'all. Now, if any man have not the spirit of the Messiah, uh-oh, he is none of his. And if the Messiah be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Leavenford. But if the spirit of him that raised up the Messiah, <laughs> raised up Yahushua from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up the Messiah from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Did y'all hear that? I'm just showing you something. You want to pull up a chair? We in here. Did y'all catch that? Put a one in here if y'all saw what I just said. Put a one in here if y'all saw what I just said. <laughs> what you just read. Put a one in here. Did you get it? <laughs> you can teach from here. Did y'all catch it? I'm going to go further uh, with the lesson. Back to nine. But you are not in the flesh. You're not living after your evil nature, right? But you're, but you're living after the spirit. Stay with me. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, right? You're not living after your carnal human nature no more. That first Adam nature, that's not how you live, right? You're living after what Yah say moving forward, right? You don't live after what it looked like, what it smelled like, what it tastes like, what it sounds like, and it feel like no more. You're, you're a child of faith. You trust Yah. At his word, and you're led by his word now. Horny or not, you're going to do what Yah say. Upset or not, you're going to do what Yah say. Tired or not, you're going to do what Yah say. Lonely or not, you, you, you're going to do what Yah say. Broke or not, you're going to do what Yah say. Because when, when, when Rav hit the earth, and you're going to have to go through a wilderness experience where you're going to have to depend on Yah for everything like they did of the children of Israel when they, when they was in the wilderness. They got rescued out of Egypt. They was in the wilderness. They had to learn to depend on Yah. They didn't do too well. Well, this time we're going to have the word living inside of us as opposed to his word being on stone. It's going to be written on the tapes of a heart. And when we go through the wilderness experience, we're going to trust Yah. So if, say if they do pull the plug on the economy where money ain't no more good. You're going to have to learn to depend on Yah. You have to be. Ten, you're gonna have to depend on Yah's word. The first time we didn't have uh, the word in our hearts; it was on stone. Now it's written on the tables of your heart. Those as true believers 
Oh, oh, you're going through the fire, the wilderness. Are you with me, son? Stay with me. So the ninth verse, but you are not in the flesh. You're not living after your corner of nature, but you're living after the Ruah, the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Yah dwells in you. We're going to see. You're going to see. It's going to be shown. It's going to be known. Ain't going to be no hiding place. Hey, we, those of us that selling out y'all to make money, let me tell you something. They're going to pull the plug on money. It's going to be a communist system. You're you going to you gonna go from millions to broke like everybody else. And then it's going to be pressure on you to take the mark of the beast. You're going to sign up for this wicked system. You're going to agree with homosexuality. You're going to agree with this wickedness. You're going to denounce Yah to live. The sellouts are Ramon Price. And then they're going to have a carnal state of mind. God know my heart. You know how they say it. He know I got to survive. If, if you're not willing to serve him now, you sure ain't going to serve him when they pull the plug. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. Prayerfully, it's going to be some that wake up because of the pressure. Prayerfully. Are y'all with me? Listen, nine first. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Yah dwells in you. It got to dwell there. You got to meditate in it both day and night. Now, if any man have not the spirit of the Messiah, he's none of his. You don't belong to him. You got to have the spirit of his son, of his child, of his children. Tenth verse, if, if the Messiah be in you, we know this, when the Messiah was the word, John 1 and 14 said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, right? We're talking about the word, y'all. If the spirit of the word, if the spirit of the Messiah be in you, the body is dead because of sin. That means your body is dead. Your human nature is dead. You don't follow that no more. You follow Yah. You're a believer. The rubber is meeting the road, y'all. We, we, we in some difficult times right now. Incredibly difficult. It's difficult to be saved right now. That's why people don't do it. A lot of people are not saved because it's difficult. It's difficult for people to say no to their flesh. They, 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 they want somebody in between the sheets. They want to floss. They want, they want to turn up. Yeah, they caught up in this world. It's difficult. And then, and that, that's a part of the seven year of tribulation. The second part of the uh, seven year tribulation is the three and a half years is even rougher than that. Where you can't buy and sell. Pressure. Pressure. T.D. Jace didn't turn change just, just because. He wasn't necessarily an e easy win. Maybe he was. I personally don't believe it was easy for, for them to get him. Uh, the pressure. Yeah, I believe it was the pressure. I know it was the pressure, to tell you the truth. <clears throat> Tip first. But, but if the side be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. If you obey the word, you're going to live righteously. Right? You're going to hold on to Yah no matter what. He said be faithful unto death. Yeah. 11 verse then teaches us. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahushua from the dead dwells in you. Now let you know that the spirit of him that raised up the Messiah dwell in you. He that raised up the Messiah from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. Quicken means make you alive. 
In other words, raise you up. It, uh, the, the word raised up to Messiah, it's going to raise you up too. It's going to quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Well, how is he going to do it? Through the word that's living in you. Yeah, we read that a couple of chapters ago in Romans the sixth chapter. Yeah, 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 he stood at the door and knocked. You heard the word, you opened up, you let it in. You just let eternal life in. You just let the, you just let the spirit in that's going to change you and take you through the mind renewal process so you'll be able to prove what's good, acceptable, and his perfect will. You just let the spirit in that reconciled you back with Yah, and you just let the spirit in that's going to raise you up at the last day. That's your shield and buckler. When the devil coming for you, the word, the word of Yah going to set up a standard against him. Giving you the what they call the grace to withstand the evil day. And the evil day is any day that the, that the spirit of the devil is trying to get you to turn against the word. Stay with me, y'all. 11 birth. But if the spirit of him that raised up the Messiah from the dead dwells in you, you can take for granted that that word, same word going to raise you up too. But it's raising us up now. That's why I say quicken your mortal bodies. Because we're still in these bodies. We're still in these bodies. And we got to withstand temptation. We got to withstand the devil, the wiles of the devil. We're surrounded. It's all on the tablets, the phones, the TVs. It's like savoir faire. It's everywhere. And we got to withstand wicked music, wicked people, folks are sexually sick, boastful, proud, high-minded, they flashy, better than you, talk down on you. That's the spirit of the enemy. Messiah didn't talk like that. He didn't walk like that. He didn't act like that because he couldn't attract like that. He couldn't attract you to Yah. Not like that. Listen. So the 11 verse is teaching us, but if the spirit of him that raised up the Messiah from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up the Messiah from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. By his spirit, by his spirit that dwells in you. Stay with me. You talk good, Reed. Reed posted, therefore, brother, we are adept as not to the law to live after the flesh. Mm-hmm. We ran through that one. Yes, sir. Stay with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, who is watching from the Shaheen heaven, y'all, who is kept, who is keeping the commandments accurately. The way, the way we keep the commandments accurately, right, is the words that was on the stone is now baptized in us. The stone is gone. So we don't rock with the commandments like that because um, Galatians teaches us, this is teaching us too. The book of Romans, as we continue to go through it, you like like w w what I talk. When you get a chance, for like, go back and listen to the Romans seven teaching from the top one and two. That kind of really explains this way better. But he took us from up under the Ten Commandments, right? Because you notice this is just real quick. You notice how Abraham didn't have the Ten Commandments; only his children did. Because his children didn't act like Abraham. So when he got the children of Israel in the wilderness, he gave them his commandments on stone. But Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34 lets us know that the Messiah said, I'm going to enter into a new covenant with, with the children of Yasharel. Not like I did when I took them by the hand and brought them out of Egypt. I'm talking about when he gave them the Ten Commandments. He took them by the hand, brought them out of Egypt, began the Ten Commandments in the wilderness, right? He said, not like that commandment. He said, this time I'm going to write my word on the tapes of their heart. He all, but before then, he said, because they broke it too. They broke it. They broke, he said, I was a good husband to them, but they broke my commandments. He said, but I got a new, something new for them. This time I'm going to write it on their hearts as opposed on stone. 
So we're as deep having a relationship with him is the ten is way more than the Ten Commandments. We're led by a spirit because none a, a, a Ten Commandment none of the Ten Commandments tell you to stop talking. The most High tell you to be quiet. The Most High tell you uh, uh, don't give ten percent, give sixty. Yeah, he might he might tell you uh, uh, you, you can't afford to give ten right now. Or, 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 or you can't you can't give anything but give your time. I'm just saying when you're led by the spirit of Yah, it's just it's a whole nother thing. But okay, I just want to share that with you. You get a chance to go back and check out uh, Romans seven, and then explain even more. I'm gonna keep teaching, you know, and and through the book, it's gonna continue to explain how we're not under the law like that no more. But watch this though, y'all. Listen, so. 11 verse, but if the spirit, that's what we getting down with, it, the, the spirit of him that raised up the Messiah from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up the Messiah from the dead shall quicken, which means make you alive, your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we're adeptors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. That's what Reed just posted. Therefore, brother, we're adeptors. We owe not to the flesh. We got to get out of paying our flesh. Some of us is too carnal. Some of us is doing things we shouldn't be doing. All what we doing is finna come to ruin anyway. They're going to pull the plug on the whole thing, y'all. They're coming in with the new world. And it's a Luciferian world. Period. It's pro these elite one percenters. They running this thing. It's going to come to an end. Whatever we working on or doing or pursuing is about to come to ruin if it don't line up with Yah. Only things we do for the most high going to last. You need to know that. We working hard, stacking up stuff. They going to knock it down. They always do. But this time, they're going to knock it down across the world. They knocked down, like, you know, uh, uh, Black Wall Street. Our dollar, like, circulated so many times. If, if, if the dollar circulated in, in Black Wall Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma, it, it, it circulated in that black city more than any other city in the world, less known in, in America. That, that place was so prosperous. It was the first city in America that had indoor plumbing. The White House didn't even have it. The first city they had it was that black city. And there's several, several cities that we had that they tore up. Killed us and took it from us. And then erased it from history so we can look like we ignorant and don't know nothing. It goes against white supremacy in the narrative they try to paint. So they destroy it and then they just lie and just wipe it from history. Then you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna learn that in school. But this time, they're gonna do the whole world. That's what Pinky and the Brain was about. They were telling you what they wanted to do. That's what The Simpsons is about. Did you know, I forget which Rothschild, uh, 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 Rothschild it is, but that sinister dude that's in um in this in the Simpsons, the white dude with the bald head center with the big nose, that's a Rothschild. He look exactly like that. That's literally a caricature of him. I just was looking at him the other day. It might have been David Rockefeller, or Rothschild or whatever. I don't remember which one it was, but it's one of the daddies. Yeah. Straight up. They not playing. They're going to do the whole world this time, though. Yeah, and they're the dragon that's after the woman. The woman that brought forth the man child is Israel, us. They're after us. And when they lock it down, they're going to have a better shot at us. But the Most High going to rescue us, though. He gave a woman in Revelation, he gave a woman wings to escape. And then he comforted her in the wilderness for three and a half years, protecting her from these wicked folks, the dragon, these wicked people. 
My point being is they're going to lock this whole thing down. Mr. Burns. Yeah, that's him. Thanks, Neil. Look up Mr. Burns. Google Mr. Burns. And then Google the Rothschild to look like him. That's exactly his picture. Oh, yeah. Back to my point. We need to get our lives in order. Quit chasing stuff you shouldn't chase. Quit doing stuff you shouldn't do. Don't create nothing that don't line up with y'all. Don't create it. Romans, the first chapter, say wicked people create wicked things. Listen, back to the point. 12 verse. Therefore, brethren, we're adeptus not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Listen. For if you live after the flesh, it's trying to tell you something. You're going to die. Are y'all with me? Put a two in here if y'all understand what I'm teaching. If you live after the flesh, you're going to die. Yeah, don't nobody know you're sleeping with that person's spouse. You're going to die. Plot and smile in people's face, stab them in the back. But you're going to die, though. Especially if you're crazy enough to do it to his children, too. Somebody serving you and you stabbed him in the back, using them and taking advantage of them. You're going to die. You, it seems like you're getting away with it, don't it? Sleeping with, 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 with your folks, a spouse. You're going to die, though. Chasing money through wicked devices. The creation of wicked things. You're going to die. You got to stop. You got to repent. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit, it's through, you can't do it, through the spirit, through the power of his word. His word has creation power in it. He said, let there be light. What happened? What happened, y'all? He said it. And what happened? There was light. His word carries power. Don't commit adultery. When he said that, the power not to commit adultery is in the fact that he said it. It's power in don't fornicate. It's power in come out from among them and be separate. The power to come out from among them is in the fact that he said it. Because whatever he said, he backing it up. Which gives you the grace to do it. I'm trying to teach Put a three in here if y'all understood that. What he tell us to do, the power to do it, is in the fact that he said it. And the believer believe it, and that's why they're able to do things they wasn't able to do before he said it, or before they read it, or before they accepted it in their life and believed it. Before they hid his word in their heart, they couldn't do it. But once they hid the truth of his word in their heart, their lives changed, and they went through the mind renewal process. He said, be faithful unto death. We ain't been faithful to nothing ever in our life. He said, be faithful on the death. You believe that? Then all of a sudden you find yourself faithful. I couldn't believe it. I'm faithful to y'all. You de definitely was faithful to school. You definitely was faithful to the job. You definitely was faithful to that woman. You definitely were faithful to that man. You definitely were faithful to, to the dope man and chasing that bag. But you ain't never been faithful to Yah. And then all of a sudden he said, be faithful on the death, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching, you believe that all of a sudden you're faithful. You're like, look up here. How did that happen? Because there's power in his word. You heard? Listen. 13 verse. For if you live after the flesh... You going to die. Did y'all hear that? But if you through the spirit, the only way you're going to be able to do it is through the spirit, y'all. Through the power of his word. It only works for the believer. It only works for the believer. But if you through the spirit do mortify, you know what mortify means? Mortify means to kill. To render to be dead. Get rid of it. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. 
What's the deeds of the body? The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Are you with me? The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Are y'all with me? But if you through the spirit do mortify, which means to kill the deeds of the body, you shall live. I'm finna get ready to, I'm get, finna get ready to go. Last verse I want to read today, because I'm basically out of time, is for as many as are led by the spirit of Yah, they are the sons of Yah. Listen, so you got folks running here talking about, oh, we all children of God. The term God, you, 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 that's not a good term. Isaiah 65 and 11. That's a Babylonian deity of fortune. Exactly what money is. That's the God of that. That's why they got it on their money. And God we trust. Which is a whole nother conversation. His name is Yah and he's Elohim. Not God. But listen. For as many as is led by the spirit of Yah. Yah is his name. His deity is Elohim. His name is Yah. It's a difference between Elohim and Yah in term. The term Elohim, they, 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 <laughs> the term Elohim is what he is in essence. And his name is Yah, just so you know. But for as many as are led by the spirit of Yah, they are the sons of Yah. Are y'all with me? Everyone is not his children. You, d d d d uh, the, the most high sold uh, wheat. And when everybody was sleeping, the enemy came in and sold tares. That's what happened on earth. There's tares here. There's children uh, of the devil here. Straight up. They're wicked. as I, They're the ones running the world. And then they're influencing others to get on the bandwagon with them because folks is afraid to die. You got folks that's literally afraid to die and you got some folks that refuse to die out to how they want to live and the things they want to do. Sin hit here. That's what I, Sin came here, y'all. And it brought death. So the Most High used death to give us life. And he partook in death. And then he created the resurrection. So that death can't hold his children. Yeah. We got we got to choose life. Both of them is here, life and death. We got to personally choose life. And it ain't easy. You got to get your hands greasy. For sheezy? All right, uh, uh, Reed. Fourteen verse. For as many as are led by the spirit of Yah. Yeah. Bobo. For... Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of Yah, they are the children of Yah. If you're not led by the Spirit, you don't belong to it. Are y'all with me? I'm going to teach it like the book teach it. Real talk. Pray we all reach it. If y'all with me, put a three in here. For as many as are led by the Spirit of Yah. What's the Spirit of Yah? John 6, y'all, 63. It's the Spirit that quickeneth. Quickeneth means make you alive. It's the Spirit that makes you alive. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak on to you are spirit and life. The words that I speak on to you are spirit and life. What's the Spirit, y'all? The Word. And it's our life, too. 14 verse, for as many as are led by the spirit of Yah, they are the children of Yah. Come on, y'all. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of Yah, they are the sons of Yah. That's it. Yeah, you got you to be born into this thing at this point. Reborn. So you can follow his word. And from that point moving forward, you deny yourself. Horny or not. Lonely or not. Upset or not. Broke or not. Happy or not. Sad or not. Period. Healthy or not, sick or not. You got to follow the word. Period. And it's finna get rougher. We finna go through the wilderness, y'all. Mm -hmm. Just like just like our forefathers did. They they went through the wilderness too, Marcel Jackson. Senior or junior, Marcel? Which Marcel is this? Senior or junior? Whichever one. Love you. Good to see you in here. Listen, for as many as are led by the spirit of Yah, they are the sons of Yah. Everybody claiming him, but he ain't claiming everybody. This race is for the believer. Those that's willing to repent, turn from their wicked way. Mm -hmm. Through believing in him, trusting in the creator. You want to, I'm praying the same prayer. You want to say, yes, we are. I pray many are spiritually prepared. We go, it's, it's going down like you ain't never seen. We read about it. We never knew we'd have to do it too. Just like people love to talk about the Messiah's death, burial, and resurrection. They didn't realize the Romans, the sixth chapter, say you got to be baptized to his death to rise up and to walk in the newness of life as well. It's your death, burial, and resurrection too. He's just the first fruit. <laughs> we follow in his lead. <laughs> Catholicism don't teach you that. They teach you that uh, Jesus did it all for you. So you go on and finish screwing and pursuing, pursuing what you're pursuing and doing what you're doing. That's what they teach, Apostle Arthur Wilson Senior. Oh, my, 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 my family in here, Nolia, bless you. I saw your daughter in here. I said, my love to y'all. You looked it wonderful. I'm about done, y'all. Oh, you look like royalty up in there. Praising him anyhow, Nolia. You was praising him and lifting him up anyhow. Can nothing stop you. Ain't no stopping us now, huh? We on the move. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless you and the family. It was good seeing you. Good seeing you. Nolia was who we was praying for, y'all, and her family that lost her, her daughter. And she had lost her son as well. I was at her uh, uh, son's home going as well. And she looked like a million dollars again and was lifting up the most high. Praising him like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all continue to pray for the family. Hallelujah. Continue to pray for the family. Is that all right? Listen, we're getting out of here. For as many as are led by the Spirit of Yah, they are of the children of Yah. Did y'all hear that? That's it. How many of y'all led by the Spirit of Yah? Put a three in here. You led by you 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 led you led you led, you led by a spirit. Put a three in here. Put a three in here. We finna go, y'all. Put a three in here. You led by a spirit. Come on now, you and you willing to go through whatever you got to go through and never let him go. Put a foe in here. You willing to give up whatever you got to give up. Walk away from whatever you got to walk away from. Cry, but you refuse to die. Put a foe in here. He can tell you no, and you still ain't going to let go. Put a foe in here. You're going to first seek the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness, knowing that all this other stuff will be added to you. 
Well, that's secondary. This stuff in this life is secondary. Keep fighting, Neil. Don't you give up, man. Put a foe in here. Put a foe in here. Keep fighting. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Talk back to me. You're right, Ioana. He's preparing his remnant in his last evil days. Uh-huh. Yeah. Put a foe in here. In order to seal the deal, we need to pray. Put five on it, y'all. Let's pray. Put five on it. I got to go. Put five on it. Let's pray. Spirit of living Elohim, we love you and thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Humbly to know how we're in your presence because we love you. We need you desperately. We choose you over anything or anybody. You got keeping power, keeping power, keeping power. Keep us by the spirit of your word, by the power, by the power of your word and your resurrection. Resurrect us to life. Resurrect us to life for we need you desperately. Give us heart and mind to surrender all, to choose you, to let go of this world, to let go of this world, to let go and let Yah. We need you. We need you. We believe you. We trust you. We celebrate you. And we pray these things in the matches name, Yahusha. Hallelujah. 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 And the mind. That was the lesson for the day. Uh, Romans the eighth chapter part two. Obviously, it's going to be a part three. Y'all permit. Uh, we have Bible study tonight on a different topic, but uh, we have Bible study tonight. It's uh, eight p.m. Thanks, thanks for hanging out. Listen, y'all, right on. Read high five, sir. Um, love you too, Trenda. Listen, y'all. Um, thank everybody. Push the share button. Sharing their platforms the truth of the world. Thank everybody to tag. And thank everybody to financially support this ministry. May the most high continue to increase you. It's good to sow where you grow. Hallelujah. Y'all want to talk about the lesson? Let's pray for everybody. Logan and all y'all putting in all the prayer uh, 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 list. Let's continue to pray for one another, okay? Uh, y'all want to talk about it? 302-202-1102, extension 815648. I got to go, y'all. Y'all be Baruch and Baruch and Shalom.